Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel with videos designed to show from migraineur to migraineur the step-by-step -step process of what goes into migraine alert dog training so that your dog can let you know hours in advance before a migraine attack hits. But before we can get started with hands-on training, it is essential that we collect and correctly store fully reliable migraine scent samples as we will expose the dog to the scent many hundreds of times during the training process. So mistakes in this stage will be multiplied by the hundreds and it is not always possible to correct them in later stages. So listen up closely as we will be carefully covering three things in this video. First, the materials you need to collect your scent samples. Second, the detailed explanation of how to accurately collect your migraine scent sample and control samples. And third, how to correctly store and use your samples so they are reliable and usable for as long as possible. If you're new here and are getting value from this video, please make sure you click on that yes. thumbs up as it really helps me keep this channel going. Now, let's get into it. You might not know this, but a migraine attack starts affecting many parts of your body chemistry a couple of hours before you actually start having physical symptoms, such as vis visual auras or transient aphasia in my case, uh, which impair my ability to see and properly process language before a migraine. So migraines affect not only our ability to properly function during a migraine attack, but they also change the smell of our sweat, saliva, and breath, from which we can collect samples to train dogs to alert to. Here's how you should collect your scent samples so they are reliable and usable when you watch my next videos on step-by-step -step migraine scent training. Before you even start collecting your scent samples, make sure you check those three boxes to make sure that you're ready to go. First, and that's very, very important, you should not have brushed your teeth, drunk anything, or eaten any food for at least 45 minutes, including gum, soft and alcoholic beverages, and cigarettes prior to collecting the sample. The only exception is water, which you should not have consumed for at least 15 minutes prior to collecting the sample. Second, part of a freezer should be already clean and food-free, ready to store only scent samples. And last but not least, make sure you have these five materials with you for the scent collection. First, a full bag of new unused cotton balls or cotton rolls, like these ones for the cotton balls and these ones for the dental rolls. Some people might prefer dental rolls as they leave less cotton residue in the mouth. Second, unscented soap is very important so as to not contaminate the migrant scent sample with any other smells that can confuse your dog and lead them to false alert later on as they could start alerting to soap fragrance or gum that you chewed earlier, earlier on, for instance. It's pretty amazing how good a dog's a sense of smell is and how easily they can pick up on the faintest of smells. And third, you're also gonna need many freezer bags, such as Ziplocs, big and small, like these ones. Fourth, you'll need many containers. You can choose between polystyrene containers or sterilized jars with plastic or metal screw lids. By sterilized, I mean um, you should have in, put them in boiling water uh, for about 30 minutes to remove any traces of con odor contamination. The size of the jar and the container mainly depends on the size of your dog, but having different sizes can be practical as there are many variables in training and they can become handy at some point. So containers or jars like these ones or these ones. These are a couple of the ones that I already had at home. Uh, glass jars like these ones that you should have sterilized or polyesterine like these ones. And fifth, you need sticker labels as well as a pencil to label your containers. I specifically and really mean sticker labels and a pencil because their smell is much, much fainter than that of a pen or a Sharpie. The one I've used in the past, which is I already had at home, was this, a roll like this, and of course, a pencil that you can write on. 
Now, in the second part of this video, we're going to be doing two types of scent collection. One of your migrant sample and the other of a control or normal sample. So let's start with the migrant sample. As soon as you start having the first symptoms of a migrant episode, follow these three steps. First, you're going to want to wash your hands for about a minute or so with unscented soap, as it is important to always start training with clean and neutral smelling hands. The step two of collecting a sample is to put two cotton balls or then rolls in your mouth and let them saturate with saliva for a minute or so, like this. Once you put them in your mouth, you won't touch them again with your hands and will spit them directly into the Ziploc, like this. It is not a problem to have six cotton balls or dental rolls within the same Ziploc. Step three is to repeat this collection process as many times as possible during the beginning of your migraine episode because you want to stockpile your samples for training. You will be using a couple of these a day throughout the whole training period, so it's important to have as many sam samples as possible. I know that it really sucks to do all of this in the beginning of a migrant episode, but trust me, I've been there so many times during this whole process as well, but again, I can guarantee you that it will be worth it in the end. It really will. I mean, you already suffer from migraines, right? So. You're already going to have the episodes anyways. So at least now you can start using your attacks to your own future benefit. Yeah. For the control samples, you're going to repeat the previous steps, but when you are certain that you're not having a migraine attack, which is great, right? Like, yay. Uh, what generally works is to leave your sample collection kit close to your bed and collect your saliva right when you wake up in the morning, even before you brush your teeth. Again, Wash your hands with the scented soap, put two cotton balls in your mouth and let them collect as much saliva as possible. Spit them into the small Ziploc and repeat the process about 10 times or so, or as many times as you can. Now that we've gone through the step-by-step -step process of accurately collecting your migraine scent sample, as well as your control sample, we've arrived at the third part of this video. So let's go over the four steps required for you to correctly store your migraine and control samples. Once you've spit a cup of cotton balls or dental rolls in the small Ziploc, like I showed you earlier, like this, you should roll it up tight, squeezing all of the air out of the bag and closing it, just like this. Next step is to label the small bag with the date following by either control scent or migrant scent by using a pencil and the white sticker labels, in my case, this little label here, just like this. So today it's May 28th, 2023, and this is my control sample, right? You can't really see it in the camera, but here it is. Step three is to double bag the freezer bags because one freezer bag is not enough to fully isolate smells. You can put up to five closed small Ziplocs of the same type with each big freezer bag like this. Just a quick reminder here that migrant samples uh, should always be kept with migrant samples and control samples should always be kept with control samples, of course so as to not cross-contaminate them. Once you've properly double-bagged and labeled your scent samples, it is important to add an extra layer of protection to make sure uh, that your scent samples do not get contaminated by any other smells. Make sure to put the double-bagged scent samples uh, in a Tupperware or mason jar with a lid like this. <laughs> before you store it in your freezer. And we are all done. Yeah! By respecting all of these precautions, you can now ensure that the scent samples you will be using during training only contain your migrant odor and or control odor, and they will last for up to a year if left on bottom in the freezer, which is great for maintenance training later on for sure. But of course I wouldn't use um, samples that old for training 
the alert. So aim to renew your scent samples every six months or so. But all of these protocols really limit your dog's chances of false alerting later on because you're giving them as clear of a picture as possible of the exact odor you want them to alert to. So now you might be wondering, Mariana, how long will the samples last while in use? Samples will actually be good for up to three periods of five minutes outside of the freezer. If you always wash your hands with unscented soap before touching them, and if you don't leave any residues with other smells on the samples. So you should always leave all of your samples in the freezer and only use one sample up to three times for training sessions, lasting up to five minutes, fully refreezing the sample used between each five minute session. This rule of thumb works for most of the training, but at the beginning, you will be very likely getting some food and tree particles on the samples, so you should throw them away after each use. And as always, if you like this video and think it's worth your thumbs up, make sure to watch my next video on the first step of scent training, and also hit the subscribe button as it really helps me keep this channel going. Thanks a lot and see you soon.